The Interior State Dispute Settlement Provision in the TPP allows foreign corporations the ability to skirt the U.S. court systems by granting them the ability to challenge U.S. laws before an international board of arbitrators. This board of arbitrators can order the government to pay billions of dollars in damages. Is this provision a violation of U.S. sovereignty or a necessary tool that ensures the agreement is implemented properly? Uh, this is certainly a provision that violates U.S. sovereignty. Um, this ISDS, as it's referred to, um, is basically an international court run by a, or where um, cases are decided by a board of arbitrators, quote unquote. And these arbitrators are corporate, um, corporate lawyers, or they're usually people, or they're looking for people. Affiliated um, with corporations. Affiliated with corporations, thank you. Um, for, and also that, that is one, that's the one aspect that um, allows corporations to, um, to, be, to uh, take advantage of this ISDS. And the other one is that corporations are actually allowed to sue governments in this court, which is completely absurd if um, people who are actually, if the people who are actually heads of the courts making the decisions, judging, doing, or making the rulings are, uh, who are jobs, um, whose jobs are um, to be, well, who are continuously hired by corporations. If they're deciding a case where it's pitting a government against a corporation, Clearly there's a conflict of interest there. Yeah, we've hit this point before, like corporations, I would say, um, the more, or the TPP gives them a lot more power than they probably deserve. And this is like the biggest point. This is like what gives them um, like the most power of, of all the points Definitely. in the TPP. But the worst part is, is that majority of these cases it will be a foreign, ca foreign corporations suing the U.S. government. Exactly. So it's not necessarily empowering U.S. corporations, which can be argued helps the consumers of the U.S. Yeah, they could exploit uh, the U.S. systems. Exactly. And what's ridiculous is that um, once the arbitrators actually ordered the governments to pay, um, according to the uh, Washington Post, once they actually, if they decide that a, or a government must pay a corporation, they can enforce that through domestic courts. So they have basically full, the full power of U.S. courts to force, uh, they have the power of the U.S. courts to force US, uh, the U.S. government to pay these corporations when and they can sue over basically anything they want. Yeah, and when you get sued, if, like, if a corporation was to sue a government and to win, who would be paying that bill? It w the government, it would be the taxpayers we would have to be paying a corporation because it won this case. So that seems even more problematic when you look at it that way. Definitely. This seems like it could be a possible power shift in the world powers, just economically. Because when you think about it, if a country exploits the systems of US, Canada, Japan, maybe, they can actually increase their economy or their po the power of their uh, e economy just a little bit, which actually could, uh, through the TPP, this could affect world powers the balance of power, the U.S. could end up actually losing a little bit of its influence in the world just based on other countries taking advantage of this, uh, of this opportunity that the TPP gives them. So instead of um, we have like government versus government power, we could have government versus multinational company power. So now instead of worrying about China, which is what this um, agreement was supposed to solve here, we would actually have to be worrying about different multinational companies competing. Definitely. In, yeah, the rise of the corporation has definitely been a huge theme lately in uh, politics and local m and uh, recent media. For example, in the San Bernardino case, the FBI wants Apple to create a tool that allows them to hack into the San Bernardino shooter's iPhone to look for evidence. However, Apple does not want to do this because it would frighten consumers away within the United States. So they're going to court about it. But the thing is, Microsoft, Google, Twitter, and Facebook are all back are all unifying and backing Apple in this court case. Really? Yeah. So it the fact that a corporation has the ability to challenge the government and it has and it probably and it has the chance to beat the government in this and ri and put profits before yeah. the safety but of Americans is Yeah, that issues. brings to light yeah. one of my personal fears just that the governments, or uh, no, not the governments, the companies could end up actually controlling governments like worldwide, which could lead to a, you know, a runaway consumer society. We could be ruled by monopolies instead of by democ uh, but democratic systems. But the difference between um, that case, the Apple versus the U.S. government case there, would be that instead of it being held in the U.S. court, it's going to be held 
by the board of arbitrators, right? So it'll be held, it'll be held, and it'll be judged by people affiliated with corporations. So there'll be obvious bias there. So then, when a corporation sees something they don't like happening, they could sue, and it won't be in our court. Yeah, uh, this is definitely an interesting conundrum because, ironically, Donald Trump actually wants Apple to be able to give over this tool to the FBI. I don't feel that it's one of his ploys to attract the American people. I feel like he actually believes it, and it's interesting because he's a far-side Republican who has a net worth of $10 billion. So it's interesting how the American people on both sides unite on this issue. Well, that's true. Yeah, this is, there's bipartisan um, efforts against this agreement. I, do you want to know what this reminds me of? You guys, Batman the Dark Knight. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, I'm yeah. not even kidding. At the end, you know that scene where Lucius hacks into all the phones in Gotham, and then he—it's like unethical to him. And I mean, if it's unethical in a movie, then really, we're, I can't believe we're actually doing this in real life. This—I was actually not aware of this at all. Okay, but the Joker uh, was about to kill the whole city. Yeah, to finish <laughs> up after this. I mean, but <laughs> I don't think the situation is that. Dire. Do the ends justify watching. the means? Yeah. All right. I think. <laughs> I think. I think. I think this is a good place to end. Uh, thank you for watching the. APR Political Review International segment, and we will see you next time. Thank you.